Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day today. Uh, we know that this can be a super stressful transition as you move into the high school. Uh, we do have a mix of families who have already uh, had older siblings who are here and we're just excited to uh, work with the larger faction of your family. And for those of you new to the high school, we hope that this hour will give you an overview of some of the supports and strategies we have in place to help your family most successfully transition to the last four years of of their high school um, career. So without further ado, I would like to uh, turn it over to our next slide and do some introductions. Um, I'm going to ask the panelists as they introduce themselves that they also share a fun fact, um, which may just help our families uh, better remember us as they get to know us a little deeply. So again, I am Alicia Zip McLaughlin, the proud principal of IHS. And one fun fact is that I took formal classical piano lessons for 13 years. Looking forward to meeting all of you. Turn it over to Ms. Finter. Good morning, everybody. Wow, that was a fun fact. I didn't realize that, Principal McLaughlin. Um, my name is Karen Finter. I'm the Director of Instruction for Grades 7 through 12. Welcome and good morning to everybody. We are very excited to welcome students back, both remotely and in person, um, this year. Um, I have uh, been in the district um, almost 25 years um, and so have taught at both Dake and the high school and served uh, the district in a variety of capacities. A fun fact about me is that I just dropped my oldest off to um, his first college apartment yesterday. Um, so forgive me if my eyes look a little puffy. <laughs> you can pass it along to whomever you would like, Mrs. Venter. Okay, how about um, how about Mr. McDonald? Good morning, everybody. I'm Kevin McDonald. And as you can see on the slide, I will be um, the counselor for students whose last names begin with A through C-O-N. Um, I've been here at Rondecoit for, I think this is my the beginning of my 24th year, maybe. I might have the math wrong. Which leads me into my fun fact I should be able to do the math because I'm actually a certified math teacher, but uh, for some reason I can't do mental math. So um, I will pass it along to Ms. Call. Self, there we go. Hi, I'm Cheryl Call. I am a school counselor here at Arundaqua High School. I will have students in the ninth grade with the last names of C O O. Uh, to G-O-N. Um, I've been here all, probably the longest in the whole district as far as school counselors. Um, and my fun fact is that I actually am a certified uh, forklift driver. And I'll pass, I'll pass it along to Ms. Larrabee. Everyone, I'm Michelle Larrabee. Everyone calls me Shelly Larrabee, though, so it's a little misleading on that, on that screen there. Um, I have been in the district for seven years, but this is my third year as a counselor. Before that, I had a bunch of different variety of roles while I was in grad school. Um, I'm very much looking forward to working with your freshmen, uh, last names G-R-A to L-A, um, and I can't wait to see you either online or in person in a couple of weeks. I will pass it on to Ms. Zaharia. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jenna Zaharia. Um, I am the school counselor for freshmen with last names L-E through P-H. I've been in the district 10 years. This is actually my 11th year, a combination of Dake and the high school. Um, but the high school has my heart, so I'm super excited that I'm here. And a fun fact about me, and yes, this is fun, although people may disagree with me, is that I love to clean and am obsessed with Norwex cleaning products. If you have never heard of them, check them out. They're amazing. Cleaning is awesome. And I will pass it on to Miss Stevenson, who is actually no longer Miss Stevenson. 
Hi everyone, my name is Whitney Ramo now. I just changed my name officially over the summer. Um, I'll be working with ninth graders, last names starting PI through ST. I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you and working with you this year. And my fun fact is I am actually expecting, so I am due with a little boy um, about mid-October. And I will pass it on to Ms. Bush. Bush and um, like some of my colleagues I've been with the district 23 plus years in the school counseling department and I'm looking forward to working with your children and I will be working with ninth graders um, towards the end of the alphabet SU through Z and my fun fact will be that I am the eighth of nine children myself my immediate family um, is about 60 plus people and that includes my two little boys that are eight and four so welcome to IHS. And with that, I will turn it over back to Mrs. Nealon. How about that? Hi, everybody. I'm Casey Nealon, and I'm the real Casey Nealon. Mr. Fleming down below is just borrowing my identity for this webinar. Um, I've been with the district for 19 years. I've taught at both Dakin High School. Um, I have been an English teacher. Right now, I'm serving the district in, in a new role that I'm very excited about. I am the interim assistant principal for grades 10 through 12. Uh, fun fact about me is that I love to travel, especially to cities, um, and explore their art and their culture, their art in particular. I'm a total nerd. All right, Mr. Fleming, you're up next. Well, thank you, Mrs. Nealon. Uh, pleasure to see everyone here. Uh, my name is Mr. Fleming. I have been a social studies teacher here at Arondequoit High School for the past 16 years. This building is like family to me. I love being here at Arondequoit uh, High School and enjoying our community. I am currently uh, the interim princ uh, assistant principal for uh, Ms. Amy Vandergrift, who recently gave birth to a uh, baby boy, and we're all excited for her and, and her new uh, arrival. And I'm excited to be in this role to serve uh, all the students at Arondequoit High School. Uh, so thank you very much. And my uh, fun fact is I'm a big time Buffalo Bills fan. I love the Buffalo Bills. So go Bills. And I'm going to pass it off to Mr. D. Veronica. We can't hear you, sir. Uh, my name is Jeff De Veronica. I'm just the public information director and kind of the producer of this whole outfit. And uh, uh, my fun fact is my softball team lost a double hunter last night to really young guys, and I think we're getting ready to hang them up soon. Not really fun, but it's reality. Okay, well, we um, thank you folks for introducing that. We hope that uh, it gives you a little bit more um, of that, that contact with us with the fun fact Kind of remember that if you can't remember all the information that came with the faces in front of you. Um, the one piece we do want to make sure that you know before we move into the rest of our presentation is we have multiple faces on the screen. Even though we have folks identified and they clarified um, where their primary supports are, you can contact any one of us at any time. We desperately want to make sure that your child feels supported and feels successful during this transition. So please know that um, the supports are alive and well, and you don't have to just rely on one or two folks to help you out. All right, we're gonna have our two assistant principals get us started with the presentation. Okay, thank you. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, a place to go for looking for information in lots of forms. So if you see the parents tab on our webpage, please know if you go there, you can get our school calendar, there's health information, the list of the clubs that are here, the code of conduct, my school box. And one of the things that we always suggest, especially for freshmen, but all kids, is get involved. There are so many clubs and opportunities this year. So if you have a chance, look those over with your son or daughter and see what interests them. All right, next slide, please. All right, just to build on Ms. Nealon's uh, 
identification of the website. If you go to that website where it says parents and you move over to the left, it will see uh, a tab that says news. Uh, it'll drop down and uh, you will see the morning show. And that is an awesome thing to click into each and every day. Uh, we'll be doing that with uh, our students uh, pre-recording in some cases, sometimes we'll be live, um, but a wonderful way to stay connected to school, get all the news and, and headlines from, from uh, the beings and the happenings here at Rondequoit High School. If you are interested in joining the morning crew, uh, please contact Mr. Marshall, and uh, his, his uh, name is at the bottom of the slide, um, David underscore Marshall at westiron.monroe.edu. So please don't forget, check in each and every day to our wonderful morning announcement show. All right, next slide. So here at IHS, we say we're a family, we say we're a community and we mean that. And so some of the values that we have that we uphold and we ask all of our incoming freshmen to help us uphold and show is our shared pride. Our number one goal here is learning, and we want each and every student to make the most of their own personal talent and potential. And as a comprehensive high school, there are so many offerings, um, and there's so many ways for students to be successful and to find success. We are all about mutual respect. We truly care about each other as human beings, and we like to get to know each other as human beings. Um, we'll talk more about our peak groups later on um, in this presentation and talk to you about ways that we're going to really try to reach out to kids and make, make more connections while we're working through this hybrid and remote learning. Mutual support. We're here to help each other. And I'm going to echo what Ms. Zip said earlier. It, you can go to any adult in this building, any adult, no matter who they are, no matter what they do, and you can get the help and the support that you need. And if that person can't do it, they will point you in the right direction of who is best suited to help you out. Shared purpose, what are we doing? And is it worthwhile? Yes, it is, and we make it worthwhile. And we celebrate our accomplishments, and we celebrate our school, and we have a lot of school spirit. Okay, I'm gonna pass it back to Todd. Next slide, please. All right, everyone. So with our hybrid model, uh, we're going to be doing a few things out of the ordinary this fall. And we'll be reminding folks as, as the uh, year unfolds and peer, uh, constantly uh, reinforcing the message uh, of wearing masks. Uh, there will be some periodic mask breaks, but for most of the time you'll be wearing a mask and maintaining six feet of social distancing whenever possible. Um, we'll be helping you and reminding you to do that, but please also be mindful of, of doing that on your own uh, in, in the high school. Uh, when traveling in the hallways, we are going to have two-way hallways uh, in accordance with uh, CDC guidelines wearing our masks. So the rule of thumb here, our motto is masks tight, stay to the right and there will be uh, passing in both directions in the hallways. This will not be the case in the stairwells. The other motto to remember is West is best. The West <laughs> side of the building, the Cooper side of the building is always the up direction. West is best, always up. Now, the East side of the building uh, by the tennis courts is down. East is down. All those stairwells are one directional. Uh, please remember those mottos. Mass tight, stay to the right. West is best, East is down. Um, good hand hygiene is very, very important. Regular hand washing is uh, what we want to see. Uh, at least 20 seconds of, of uh, soap and water before you're done. Um, I have a little song I sing to myself. It uh, makes me happy. zippity doo da, zippity a. If you sing that whole song, it takes about 20 seconds. And uh, it's a good way for you to remember uh, to take your time with that, that hand hygiene. Uh, we will also have alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizer in all of the classrooms and all of the uh, offices here at Rondequoit High School. Um, so please take advantage of that. Um, don't put a little drop on there. Please put enough in your hand that you can actually wipe them for 30 sec uh, 20 seconds. Uh, so that's a full squirt out of that, that hand sanitizer bottle. Uh, please and thank you. Uh, please try as much as possible to limit the use of shared objects. There's going to be some of that, but as much as we can, please bring your own rulers, calculators, markers, etc. That way we're not uh, passing objects around uh, to minimize the flow of the uh, 
the, the, uh, the, the germs. Um, one other thing uh, in, in the line of germs, no money, no cash, no paper, no coins, none of it. We're, we're not going to do that this fall. Uh, vending machines are not going to be a thing. Um, so please plan accordingly. Make sure that your My School Bucks account is up to date and periodically replenished. Uh, we are going to, uh, for the, the at least the, the fall, not be dealing with cash here at Rondequoit High School. Uh, here, Sweden has gone there already, and and we're gonna we're gonna do that as well. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right, so you're gonna see some new things in the high school to help with our our COVID nineteen procedures and processes. Uh, the top left is a sign to remember uh, to wear mask uh, and stay to the right in those hallways and in the classrooms. Please respect uh, your yourselves, your peers, your uh, your teachers keep that mask on uh, and, and, and it really does a lot to keep us all safe. So that is part of our social contract. Um, you're also going to see in every classroom the eagle. Uh, on the far right there you have the eagle uh, reminding us of six feet apart staying uh, socially distanced. Just so happens an actual bald eagle has a six foot wingspan. So a uh, great motto and mascot to have in these times. Um, please stay home if you're not feeling well. Do those self-checks each and every morning. Take your temperature. It's okay. Stay home if you're not feeling well. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, you know, I spoke to masks and, and hand washing earlier. You'll see that as a reminder in each and every classroom. Uh, teachers and staff will be reminding you as well. Um, you're also going to see on the hallways uh, in the center of the slide, a, a emblem that says, do your part, stay six feet apart. And uh, that is, is gonna be a, a great reinforcement. They'll be 12 feet apart uh, intervals with a little dot uh, halfway for six feet all throughout the building, uh, just so that we're staying mindful of, of that, that need. Um, and then at the bottom left, uh, we just put them up this morning uh, and I've been seeing uh, one Direction, she doesn't know she's beautiful because of the signs. One Direction hallways uh, are a thing. Like I said earlier, West is best uh, up and then on the east side by the tennis courts, uh, one way down, uh, east is down. Okay, so those are just some things to be familiar with as you enter into the building. Next slide, please. We wanna take a moment and answer a couple of questions. Um, I think we will um, go through the presentation. We will have time for questions at the end, and then we will also publish, if we run out of time, we will publish all the answers from the high school. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's talk about school rules and expectations. Uh, we really try to model what we do here on the expectations that go beyond these four walls. Um, so we're preparing kids, students, teachers, everyone here for college, career, continued learning, service, citizenship, and life. You know, the expectations when you have a job, when you go to college, whatever it is you do after you leave here, you're expected to be on time. You're expected to dress appropriately, be courteous to the people around you, and to work hard and give your best effort every day. So that's what we ask of our students as well. Um, expectations can be found in the Code of Conduct which will be in the IHS student handbook with their planner, but you can also find it in the forms section on, um, on our website, the one that I pointed out earlier. Okay, next slide, please. So big year, freshman year is a huge transition in the lives of the class of 2024, and we are thrilled that you're about to embark on this journey. Uh, it is a comprehensive school that you are, are joining, and we are enthusiastic to see you add to our culture and build on our sense of community. While you're here at Ron Quiet High School, challenge yourself, get involved. I'm gonna say that again, get involved. That is the best way to have fun and enjoy your time here at school. We have a wide variety of clubs, sports, uh, art, the arts, music, drama, uh, you name it. There's something here at Ron Quiet High School for everyone. Um, so, all of that stuff is, is found on the website and, and uh, there's all sorts of contact information for, for sponsor, coaches, uh, advisors, et cetera. So take advantage of that. 
Ask for help. No one knows everything. Everyone can help someone. Uh, so when you have a, a question, don't be afraid. Uh, it's expected that you're going to be, be needing help when you come in. Uh, and, and we're all going to be helping each other in this hybrid model. Um, be an active listener as much as possible. Um, try to write down important information and be the person that other people can rely on uh, if they missed something and, and share and, and look after one another. Be responsible uh, for missing work and uh, following up on absent work. This is important without a hybrid uh, COVID environment, uh, but it is all, uh, also very, very important right now. Um, have a planner, um, stay organized, and be here. The most important thing for success is showing up every day, engaged to learn, uh, and, and doing what you need to do in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. Next slide, please. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Um, we're just gonna give you a, a reminder for some and an overview for those of you who um, haven't yet been able to join us uh, at our previous webinars. This information will all be posted on the IHS website and you can find um, additional information on the district website. But just to give an overview again of that hybrid learning model um, and that flex back and forth between when you're live um, in brick and mortar building and when you are still engaging while you're at home. Uh, we do have our two cohorts with our school spirit and colors. The blue cohort is uh, most students with last name A through LAN. They will be coming to school to the building every Monday and Thursday. And then the gold cohort with students last names Linder through Z will be coming to the building every Tuesday and Friday. On the opposite days, you will have materials, videos, um, tasks that your teachers are going to expect you to engage with. So this year is different than our virtual learning was in the spring. Uh, we have um, the expectations are that every single student is engaging every single day and that they're engaging with the work and with the learning that the teachers are asking. So if you have questions about kind of that overview, we are happy to answer any of those for you. Um, we do know that there are variations uh, within those cohorts. Many folks have reached out to us already. Um, if you are one of the families who is um, who needed to switch their cohorts because of um, family barriers, we have already taken care of that. And at this point, we have all of our classes very carefully balanced between the blue and the gold so that we can keep our numbers small in those classrooms to ensure that we have that social distancing. So changes in schedules moving forward are going to be slim to none because of that health and safety and needing to make sure that we have that um, six foot spacing and we're always balancing our blue and our gold group in each period in classroom. Um, some students, as you can see below, will be expected to be in person on campus more than those two days. And there will be opportunities. I know there's lots of questions about our technology courses and our courses with specialized computer programs. Um, your teachers will be working directly with you. There is an opportunity on Wednesdays for us to have students access those materials on site since most students will be learning from home on those Wednesdays. Um, we are going to talk about peak groups in a little bit, so I will hold off on that to help you better understand what that looks like on Wednesdays. The other component to look for that I will send the schedule out to parents is the drop-in Zoom office hours. So those will be occurring by department on Wednesdays. That's not the only time for students to ask questions and engage with teachers. They always can reach out during Schoology. There's always email and there's always additional requests uh, that students can make of their teachers for additional Zoom opportunities. Um, some folks do use Remind apps as well. Uh, so if there is a communication style that we have not explored that would be helpful for you and your family, 
please feel free to reach out to us, let us know, and we will do our best to make sure that we are accommodating on this end. So to dig in a little bit more about that uh, remote learning component, the next three slides, Mrs. Finter is going to um, help us have a little deeper understanding. Sure, thanks. Um, you know, and, and I know, um, you know, as, as parents and some students are, are watching and, and, you know, all through um, this summer, we've been pulsing out lots and lots of information and it can be, um, it can be overwhelming. Um, but, but really, you know, when you think about the comprehensive program at Irondequoit High School that students across their four years have access to, we've tried our very best to preserve that. And, and preserve the high school experience. Um, we're asking for, for a little bit of patience as we get um, some of, um, you know, our, we get our students back, we get our staff back, but then as we start to even further, you know, Mr. Fleming talked about the importance of being involved. Well, we've, we've got to get kids in the door, get them in safely, um, and then as um, the fall ramps up, more and more opportunities, you know, to the extent possible for remote, remote club, um, participation um, and some of our um, other extracurriculars um, will be kicking off, um, so to speak, later in September. So, so some of the, some of you folks that had questions about that, you know, just, just stay tuned. Um, lots of those opportunities will be, be stretching both worlds for our hybrid students and our, for remote, uh, our full remote students. Um, for our full remote students, um, ag again, for that comprehensive program, they are also assigned into that either blue or gold cohort group. And for that, um, those learning opportunities, they will sink into their classes um, where possible um, to receive that live direct instruction from their teacher, um, to hear mini lesson, get question and answer um, from their peers, um, uh, uh, identified and answered. And then they will, the, at the teacher's discretion, you know, how, how they're using that face-to-face -face time may warrant um, their participation for the full 42 minutes or it might be that 10 minute 10 to 15 minute mini lesson and then they're redirected to work independently or within a small group in a virtual setting um, and so uh, teachers will will engage with those students um, on those synchronous days real time following their schedule but those students are part of their class they're going to be interacting with students that might be attending in person responding to discussions um, online we're really leveraging not just that face-to-face -face time window but all of those other windows of time across the week to get that full five five day a week um, uh, breadth and depth of instruction it's just reimagining how the teacher uses time in the classroom. That initial warm up that students engage with when they come into a classroom to kind of build on their prior knowledge, that doesn't go away. It might just happen asynchronously. Not everybody's doing it at the same time. And then teachers might deliver a bit of instruction like they normally would in the classroom and then give kids time and space to practice and apply. Again, that might not happen all at the same time for every student, but the student can kind of select um, and build their um, their work time um, over the course of those synchronous or asynchronous days. Next slide. Next slide. Um, there are um, some new technology tools um, this year to support our students. Um, Microsoft Teams um, it is part of our Office 365 environment and Teams allows us to have students join their classes remotely um, with a lot greater security than, than Zoom. I mean, I'm, I'm sure all of you have seen some of the issues with Zoom um, over the course of the spring, not, not just in West Aranda, quite just globally. Um, and so Teams allows um, the teacher to have really tight control over who has access, how they're accessing um, the class link. It takes attendance. Um, and supports students interaction with school, our other system Schoology that virtual classroom space so teams is going to be how students will log in and they'll receive information about how to do that um, directly from their teacher 
In addition to that, over the summer, our phenomenal technology team has set up a student and parent tech help support that's right on the main, plate, main space of our district website. It's just below all of those icons. It's the first link listed for tech support that has information of, on every district system that we use to support the integration of, of technology in this hybrid or full remote world. We know, um, just as it is, is for adults, you know, our abrupt shift to um, full remote instruction in the spring, it was a, it was a response to a crisis. Um, and that crisis hasn't, hasn't diminished. Um, you know, we're still in the midst of a, of a global pandemic. And so we know that our students are, are not only dealing with that and the impact that it may have had um, on their daily routine, um, on their families, um, their loved ones near and far, but also just just given some of the, the civil unrest that um, is occurring, the injustice that's occurring in the world, kids, kids are, are um, it's weighing heavily on them. And so we know that it is critically important and these phenomenal faces on the screen in front of you, our, our job is to make sure that we're taking care of the kids. And so we're, we're so fortunate to partner um, with homes and families, just parents and it. to, um, to support to support your students um, to the extent that we can and network across, um, across our community to get them the resources that they need. So teachers are really gonna focus heavily those first few days on making sure that the kids are adapted to this new environment to make sure that they are taking care of themselves and thinking about their social emotional health, uh, health and wellness um, and that, that they have the skills needed to balance um, what it's going to take to access our rigorous academic program. Um, you know, as freshmen come in, this is, you know, um, it's the last four years, it's the first of the last four years, but this is, this is really the culminating, starting to have that culminating impact. And so we want them to do their very best academically so that they have opportunities wherever their, their life path path may take them. So it is critically important that they're doing okay, they have the skills needed, and we're going to ensure that that happens in our classrooms. Thank you. Uh, just real quick, um, we don't have to go through every piece on this slide because uh, Mrs. Finter did touch on a few components as she was running through uh, the remote learning, but we will, uh, in accordance with New York State expectations and requirements, need to, a take, a, need to take attendance every day. There will be information coming out to homes soon um, we will be using some um, attendance structures during those remote days where students and or parents can um, log in attendance for the student who is learning from home. And then we have some systems for checks and balances on our end to make sure that that attendance is aligning with engagement or completion of the learning tasks that are assigned. More information is coming out about that soon. Um, and the grading feedback is, as, as discussed prior, um, there will be lots of opportunity, um, even with the remote components for all students, for teachers to give feedback to that work so that um, they're not waiting until the Thursday or the Friday to have their questions answered. There is some time on Wednesdays to also provision for that. Um, we talked about the code of conduct, the extracurricular activities. We know that the governor um, has put out some information about sports coming up and those possibilities. Uh, so there will be information coming out from our athletics department for the whole school. Um, and the technology piece we'll talk a little later. But I think what we are hoping for most is that two-way form of communication. We really want to serve uh, your students' needs and your needs. And there will be some times where they share information with you at home that we might not have been aware of. Um, so just not assuming that we're aware of the struggles that they may encounter and making sure that you're reaching out to us so that 
that we can intervene before that becomes a large boulder for them. Next slide. All right, restorative practices are really tied to the core values that Mrs. Nealon mentioned earlier, mutual respect, mutual support, shared pride, and shared purpose. Um, mutual uh, restorative practices is really about working with people rather than working on people. Uh, it's a way of dealing with behavior uh, management as, as needed. Human beings are not always rational people, uh, so problem solving is an inevitable thing. And all the current research shows that restorative practices do a great deal to strengthen communities and improve academic achievement. Uh, and it's something that we really believe in here at the high school. So it's a mentality of looking at, at problems uh, together and, and identifying and reflecting on what happened, uh, being metacognitive about what we were thinking as something was happening, uh, really digging deeply into all the layers of people who have been affected by uh, poor choices, um, what can be done to rebuild and repair uh, the, the damages that have been done, and then how do we create the conditions so these sorts of things don't recur. Um, so restorative practices, you'll hear that a lot when you enter the building, and it's something that we will do all as a community together. Next slide, please. Okay, and I'm just gonna build right off of what Mr. Fleming was talking about. So thanks, Todd. As we continue to strengthen our base here and build our community, we all know that relationships are the most important piece. So you will find on your student schedule a peak course day, and that will happen on Wednesdays. And our peak groups are, po uh, <clears throat> excuse me, positive expectations and kindness. That's what we want to promote. Um, and so on these days, there's gonna be a couple of adults from the building that are gonna make Zoom calls or Remind, uh, inform, you know, getting connecting through Remind, Schoology, whatever platform that they would like. And it's just about building relationships with more of our students. There'll be about 10 to 11 students in the group. Um, our hope is that as we work to educate the whole child, um, that this is another way of getting to know people in a different way and getting to know more adults in the building. It's a way that we can help manage the anxiety, the, the unrest, the divisiveness, the, the, the uncomfortableness of COVID and other things happening in our world by getting just to know one another. An example of this is the strength-based opener that we all did by sharing a fun fact about ourselves. It doesn't have to be a heavy conversation, but it's just getting started and talking with each other and communicating and con continuing to build our community here and around Equate High School. Okay, I think we're gonna turn it over to the counselors now. Yes, thank you. I'm gonna talk a little bit about graduation requirements. Um, as parents, I'm gonna simplify this a little bit because New York State has of course made it very complicated. There are so many pathways to graduation, appeals, you'll hear different language, but really what you as parents need to know is there are two types of diplomas that students typically strive for in our building. That's the Regents Diploma and the Regents Diploma with Advanced Designation. Being that you have freshman students starting with us, we are all on track for that Regents Diploma with Advanced Designation at this point. Sometimes along the way, we'll make adjustments. We do that with you. We talk about reasons why that may be a good idea. But at this point, we're all striving for that advanced diploma. On the left-hand side, you will see the credit requirements. So down the first column are the courses or the course areas that students have to take classes in. English, social studies, science, math, language other than English or foreign language, world language, we call that our art or music credit, physical education, health, and then electives. I think Mr. Fleming mentioned earlier, we're a comprehensive high school. So we have electives within technology, business, within our um, subjects such as English or social studies. We have so many different electives for students to explore. The next column lists the credit requirements. So what is a credit? If I take English every day the full year, that's a one credit course. I have to receive a grade of 65 or higher to actually earn that credit. Obviously, we're having students strive for much higher than 65, um, but that's the minimum grade they would have to get to earn that credit. So you can see English and social studies, you need it all four years for four credits. Math and science, 
three credits are required. However, we're always pushing our students to take that fourth credit. Um, it's great for students going into college. They need that additional math and science. Even for students taking different paths, math and science can still be very relevant. Um, world language, one credit. Now this is where things kind of get a little bit confusing because for our students going for that advanced diploma, which is what we have you all on track for, um, three, three credits of that language tend to be the easiest way to meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. um, but every student has to have at least one credit. Everyone's got to do art or music. Uh, we also have some tech classes that count towards that for students who just aren't musically interested or artistically talented and don't want to do those. Um, physical education is every other day the full year. So they get a half credit each year. And then again, health is a half a credit. We typically do that sophomore year. There are some exceptions to that. And then our electives. So those are the main class areas and credits that we have to get. 22 total credits, regardless of which diploma type. Sometimes students will say, oh, for that advanced diploma, I have to do advanced English, right? Nope, you don't. So those course titles really aren't relevant to the type of diploma. As long as you're passing your classes in those areas and earning 22 total credits, you're going to graduate. If we go to the next slide, this is where the real um, differences come in is the Regents exams. So for a Regents diploma, you have to pass five exams. Those are typically um, at the end of courses, they happen automatically. So a Regents exam is a test given by New York State. They happen for all students in the state the same day, the same time. So students will automatically be enrolled in the courses they need with these exams. For example, almost all of our freshmen take algebra. There's a Regents exam attached to that class. Um, the same thing with living environment for science. So for a general Regents diploma, a student's going to pass a math, a science, uh, global history after their sophomore year, US history after junior year, ELA after junior year, that's their five exams. If you're striving for that advanced diploma, which again is what we have your students on track for, you actually need eight exams. So some additional math, additional science, um, and you need the world language exam, which is not a technical regions exam, but we kind of count it as one. It happens after level three, which is sophomore year, or there's some sequences students can do within our art or business or technology departments. So again, this gets pretty complicated. And you see on this slide that we even mentioned honors. So that is an additional um, area that students who do really well on the regents exams could graduate with a regents diploma with advanced designation with honors. That's a mouthful, right? So that's something, again, you just need to have an awareness of this. We as counselors are tracking this every single year. Uh, teachers are talking to students about Regents exams with their classes. We will make sure that your students are on track to graduate. If anything was to happen that was putting that in jeopardy, believe me, there would be many people in touch with you. But we want you to have this awareness. We talk about it with students regularly about the graduation requirements. We don't get into the nitty gritty of honors and things like that typically just because some of our more anxious students then are like stressing about, I have to get this certain score on this test. Um, we just want you to know that there's two types of diplomas. We will keep you posted on how things are going. Um, but generally, students are striving for that advanced diploma. We have a very high number of students who graduate from here with that. I just cut in very quickly. So I know given our unique circumstance to start the year and across all schools in New York State, um, we did receive um, some information that the state does have windows of time established for administration of um, the Regents exams in June, really looking far ahead. Um, the moment we hear that a timeline might have shifted or changed or decisions around administration of those assessments, we'll make sure we communicate that. But, but truly, um, our, our phenomenal teachers work with your phenomenal students and they plan instruction that's here, the Regents is here. So students are gonna be well prepared to tackle those assessments if they're administered or even if they're not administered as they were last year we, we took a pause on those from the state so we'll make sure that we're we're communicating to that and the kids are ready and you can go to the next slide okay so <clears throat> While our focus right now really is on that successful transition for students and families to come to our high school and start the year um, successfully. 
And as you hear the different graduation requirements and the close work that counselors and teachers and coaches do with um, each student to ensure that they're progressing towards graduation, um, for our student athletes that are looking at competing in college after high school, um, there is a um, academic eligibility process through the NCAA. And um, typically within taking the New York State classes that are required for graduation, and then based on how you do in those classes, combined with needing to take some SATs and ACTs, um, our students work with counselors um, and with their families around then applying for um, that eligibility process um, and then really working with colleges. And just, I would emphasize the importance of, as, as they work hard to be peak in all areas, that emphasis of the student athlete and, and that equal um, hard work in and out of the classroom, um, as I said, because looking at, you know, um, this is solely um, particular to the academic eligibility process related to being a student athlete at the college level. And the two links that are um, listed right here are phenomenal resources. Um, one is the Eligibility Center, and one is a guide for student athletes in the future for families. Um, so if you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask your counselor. Um, having been a college athlete, having been um, a college and high school coach for many years, um, feel free to also reach out to me if you have any questions. And with that, I, I'm turning it back over to... I will run us through some basic technology tips. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Um, Again, our uh, technology department has been working diligently all summer long. They do have the link that's here to troubleshoot, but they will answer any question that you have regarding um, the use of the one-to-one -one devices. I think with this, um, one reminder is to go to that My School Bucks to purchase the device insurance. You can do that right online through that app. Um, and then some of the other questions that have popped up, rather than read this out loud to you, we'll pause on the screen for a second. But with the technology piece, uh, many of our clubs will start off as virtual experiences so that all students can still participate. That list, um, I have two folks who have just sent me their remaining updates. I will have that list updated on the IHS website on Monday. You will find that under that parent tab. I will send out a communication though to remind you when that is active. Um, another piece of technology for us is using the parent portal and the students using um, their portals for Infinite Campus. Our high school schedules are due to come out later tonight so that you can, I know folks, I appreciate so much your patience with that. Um, the delay this year really was making sure that we were honoring all, uh, all families' needs to just process information and make the best decision for their families. And because of that, that meant some last minute adjustments to our remote groups and again, rebalancing our blue and gold in-person groups. Um, so that is why we are a bit delayed on our schedule release. High school will come out just prior to Dake, but Dake is, fo is following shortly, um, sometime on Monday. Uh, it gives you the weekend to kind of look through the updated supply list, which will also be posted by the end of today. We have scaled back. Many of you have asked great questions about since we're not using lockers to start the year, we know that we have to revisit that with the colder weather um, impending, but not wondering or asking questions about the heavy textbooks, the multiple three ring binders, and does my student have to carry that all day in the backpack? Really great questions. And our uh, flex in response to that is um, that we will be provisioning textbooks, those heavier textbooks, for students to take home and use at home, where most of their remote learning um, will be accessing those materials. For our full remote learners, we will be communicating shortly. We will have a materials pickup day where you can come if you haven't yet received the laptop, you'll get that. Your, um, your student will be able to sign out any of the textbooks and materials that they need to be successful uh, and engage with the year. We do have the mask um, to provision to all students. 
Um, so that piece around technology and making sure that you're, um, you have the, the parent portal, portal and you're accessing that will be another great way to engage in communication. Any student grades, any missing flags for assignments will also show up in that portal for you, as well as for the students. Um, and, and it's just a great way. If there's something there that you, you don't understand or you're not sure, or you know your student turned in that assignment, but it's still reflected as missing, we highly encourage you to reach out to your child's teacher first. If you're not getting the, um, the response or answer that is um, making sense or, or fits with what you understood of the ask, then our school counselors and APs are certainly there to support and ultimately feel free to bring me any questions or concerns that you have. Next slide, please. So these are just some of the tools uh, that the students are used to using. I did speak to that, that top icon, which is the infinite campus piece where we are posting our grades and attendance and assignments. Um, as a parent of a sophomore, it does look slightly different for us, um, that little icon for the parent portal. Uh, if you need help accessing the parent portal, please call the high school. We have lots of folks here to help you get that access set up so that you can monitor grades and attendance. Um, and again, the attendance component, if you needed to uh, log your, your child in for one of the remote days, you'd be able to do that through that app as well. Uh, we are a Microsoft Office 365 school as a district, sorry, the whole district, not just the high school. Um, our main platform is Schoology. Um, students will be given their Schoology access um, through their classes, but this year we are providing parents with Schoology access codes as well so that you can follow along with the assignments. Um, you won't be able to see the, the classroom discussions because of some privacy um, concerns there, but you can see any of the assignments that your child has been assigned, some of the assessments and the larger learning assessments that they're asking. Those codes will come out directly from us to you next week. So if you've not seen those codes, by the end of next week, we'll do another um, text from the high school to encourage you to reach out to us and we'll get that to you as well. Uh, Zoom is the, we're still operating with Zoom, although we're also adding on Microsoft Teams. Uh, the Teams uh, provides a little more security for us on, um, on our end for the instructional component and just as to the efficacy of the work being done between student and teachers here. So um, your, your students will be sent those links through your, your child's Schoology page so that if they're a full remote learner and they need to log in to follow their classroom schedule, it will be clear where they need to go to be prepared to follow along. Again, any of those questions um, as we send out information in the upcoming weeks, I apologize up front because it's going to feel like a lot of information coming to you at once. Please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us with questions that you have. Next can slide, I, can please. I, can I add one thing about Infinite Campus? If you're, yep. not receiving, you. if you're not receiving emails or texts, please get in there, parents, and, and make sure you have your updated email and make sure that you have your cell phone number in there. We're gonna be using a lot more text messaging to alert you to things. Um, so please uh, give that a quick check. Thank you, Mr. DeVeronica. Next, there we go. Uh, we are also always looking to maintain a safe school environment. Um, and so that Safe School Helpline app, you can see at the bottom left, uh, we have posters in the school. We're encouraging every student and parent to, to have that app on their phone. It's a way for you to share anonymously any concerns that you have with um, student activity, unsafe or suspicious activity uh, on school campus. The caveat to that is that if it is a weekend or a holiday, 
um, you can still fill this Safe School Helpline out, but um, because of the intermittent access for folks who work and who are on vacations during those times, we would not want to miss that communication. So during those times, we would encourage you to reach out to the police department and 911 for those types of um, suspicious or unsafe activities during extended breaks. Um, we are still going to maintain for entrance. You will know I will be sending a video to walk students through um, every single uh, entry point and do some walkthrough of, of schedules so they can see the flow of how the building will operate. We are going to have two lines um, in the main entrance with with 10 to 12 feet um, social distancing between those two lines. We are going to offer um, a third line for the first couple of weeks over at door two, which is at the end of the art hallway, or if you're facing the school, it's the far door to the left uh, um, toward Dake. Um, as another way to make sure that we're getting students in as quickly as possible. So uh, we are doing temperature checks at the door as a second way to monitor the safety on the way in. We're asking that you are completing, again, those safety checks at home before students come. And if you have any question at all around um, health and of, of whether to come or not, please feel free to call the school, call your doctor. Um, we just, we wanna make sure that we're keeping everyone as safe as possible. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, we, we also know and recognize that the freshman year can be stressful in itself. Then you sprinkle on top of that a global pandemic and stress can be astronomical. So we are just, um, we will offer some coffee talks throughout the year to give some more information on vaping and other substance use. We do just want um, to let you know that as we continue to monitor that uh, with our um, youth risk behavior survey and some of the data points that we, we look to track, um, when some students are feeling overwhelmed and stressed, there is a potential for them to turn to substance use. And so we are so fortunate to have on our campus um, a, a substance abuse prevention specialist, Ms. Snyder. You see her contact information at the bottom of the slide. Um, she any of the social workers or any of the school counselors that you see in front of you today are more than happy to talk to you about ways to support you and your child. If you have concerns about stress level, just overall managing their day with this with this this global pandemic, um, any mental health concerns that you have, any substance abuse um, or substance use concerns that you have, please know that we are here to support you. Um, we're also uh, we're also here to support our students, and we have some educational components built in during that um, morning show time to roll out to our students throughout the year. I know we are almost to the to the break point. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Neal and Mr. Fleming to run through their information so you have direct access to them. Okay. So as you can see, there's my information, my contact information. I'm um, representing grades 10 through 12, but I'm also overseeing and working with students that are in some of our different programs, like our consult program, our 1214 program, and our ENL, our English as a New Language students. So even if you're, if you're a freshman and you fall into some of those categories, um, then I will be um, your administrator for the year. Um, I do have a Remind available. Uh, if you're a sophomore, that's what you, you can text at BGBD64 to 81010, and there's one for seniors there. I'm also available by email or phone. If there's anything you need, anything I can help you with, give me a call. Get in touch. Mr. Thank you, Casey. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Nealon. 
a wise man by the name of Stephen Covey once said, our relationships are the most important thing that we own. And communication is the glue that holds those relationships together. Uh, so just to build on uh, Ms. Nealon's point, you know, there's so many ways to get in contact with teachers, staff members, your grade level administrators. I will have grade uh, nine and 11, uh, as well as the 811 life skills and AMP programs. Um, so that'll be my share of, of the population. I will also be available on uh, the Remind app. My email is below as well as my office phone number and a recent update to this presentation. If you go to the very next slide, um, when, when you access it, you will find our Schoology class codes. Those are available for the class of 2021 all the way to this class of 2024. So lots of information will be updated there uh, on a weekly, sometimes even daily basis. Um, just like going to your classroom Schoology pages, please don't forget to visit your uh, class uh, of 2024 Schoology page. Uh, and that's, that's it. Uh, next slide. So that brings us right to 11 o'clock. I do want to just answer a couple of the questions that popped up and then I will commit to screen grabbing all of the questions that are there and making sure I put that up on our IHS website for you to get an FAQ from today. Um, again, just a reminder, schedules will be coming out later this afternoon for high school and Dake will be on a slight delay until sometime on Monday. Uh, planners, we are providing planners for our freshmen. For upperclassmen, if they would like them, we typically order a few extra, um, but many of them have converted over to their electronic devices to manage um, some of that um, that they would normally have done in their planners. So planners will be provided for those folks on campus during their first couple of days here in their first period classes for full remote learners. That will be one, um, one piece of material that you pick up when you come in for that day or on that day. Um, our freshman orientation is still set for September 2nd. The link leader assignments are coming to you. Our link leaders are the juniors and seniors who have volunteered their times and have um, spent the better part of a week learning about how to best guide and engage um, students in uh, conversations and activities and making sure that they're answering any of the questions from a student lens that they would have as they transition in. Um, another piece uh, to that that I, uh, that I get frequently is why are the other grade levels having in-person um, orientations and the high school isn't? And yes, in previous years we have had um, in-person orientation and allowed the students time to travel the building and to look at their schedule. This year, because of COVID, the positive was that we were able to turn over our entire building for the facility modernization updates, which allowed them to get more work done in a concentrated time period, but we are so close. Um, to opening up school and they are still working. And so we did not have enough safe places on our campus to ensure that we could get all of our ninth graders here and travel throughout the building, which is why this year is virtual. If you have a child who is anxious, stressed, needs to walk their schedule, please reach out to myself, Ms. Nealon, or Mr. Fleming. We are happy to accommodate, flex our schedules, and get them in here to do that. You just simply email any one of us and we'll help you out with that. Um, at this point, I would like to thank all of you and be respectful of your time. Um, we will upload this full PowerPoint so that if you need to go back to that or you have some friends or colleagues that weren't able to join us, they'll, able, they'll be able to look through the PowerPoint and we are recording. So the recording will also be posted for you. And I wanna pause and recognize for all the parents out there, we know that we cannot be successful without a, an authentic partnership with you. We know that you have been stretched in ways that um, you never anticipated as a parent uh, through COVID and having to become the teacher uh, for your children. We are thrilled 
to be able to have students back in front of us and to be able to engage with them this year um, and still looking to provide the optimal level of support that we can not only for the students but for you as you continue to balance a full world of work and a full world as parent responsibility. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions or concerns. I'm so appreciative of your time today. We're really looking forward to working with you this year, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so uh, much, everyone. Principal Zip, I just want a reminder, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m., uh, IHS freshman webinar. We will get the link out to students and families on Tuesday evening, um, sometime on Tuesday, the day before. So um, just a reminder about that one on, on Wednesday morning at 9. All right. All good? Thank you, folks. Have a phenomenal weekend. Appreciate your time.